This is breaking news. The New Jersey chapter of the Council on American Islamic Relations is holding a press conference after the state's longest serving Muslim mayor was banned from attending the White House in Al Fitr celebration. Mayor Mohammed Karula says moments before he arrived, the Secret Service told him he was not cleared for entry. Let's go to that briefing now. Uh, about the Muslim community and the mayor himself. Um, he's very humble, so I'll take the opportunity to, uh, you know, give him the, you know, the, the limelight and let, you know, the reporters and those know who he is and why this moment is so important to the Muslim community. Uh, the mayor is humble and is a true grassroots leader. He is well known across the state of New Jersey within the Muslim and non-Muslim community. He has advocated for marginalized communities. He has advocated for the Muslim community, and he's been uh, in office for about 17 years now, is that correct? As mayor. As mayor, uh, consecutively. Uh, and we believe that he is the longest serving Muslim mayor in the state of New Jersey, and it is likely the case that he is also uh, nationally the longest serving Muslim elected official uh, currently serving. Um, we take great pride in our leadership, uh, and we also, it's uh, worth noting that New Jersey has the most Muslims in elected office than any other state in the nation, approximately 50 uh, Muslims in office. The mayor is one of them. Uh, New Jersey has about 3.5% uh, of the population being Muslim. That is uh, the most per capita than any other state in the nation. Uh, so we have a very dense population. Again, the most dense uh, than any other state. Uh, the community is very diverse, comprising of Arab, South Asian, um, African, uh, African American, convert, etc. Um, New Jersey is arguably one of the most diverse nations with uh, one of the most diverse Muslim communities. Um, this incident today is an opportunity to shine light on what is known as the watch list. A little bit of history, uh, just a quick uh, brief history. We'll go into more details later. Uh, but the watch list is a post 9-11 tool uh, that came from the Bush administration in 2003. Uh, two decades after 9-11, we continue to see the harm of the watch list. We continue to see how it causes difficulties for American Muslims and Americans at large infringing on their civil rights. Uh, the watch list, it's important to note, it has not gotten smaller. It has not collected dust on a shelf. In fact, it is getting larger and it continues to cause harm. And yesterday's incident is the latest incident uh, showcasing uh, the continued reality of the watch list. Uh, the watch list continued to expand both under the Obama and the Trump administration. And today is an opportunity for the nation, for the government to consider an opportunity to disband the watch list once and for all. Um, it has caused issues for Muslim Americans during their travel overseas and returning back to America. It has caused issues because the FBI uses it for their spying. Um, and it has caused issues, of course, in other instances like with the Secret Service. Uh, the FBI distributes the watch list to government agencies, and that is the issue at hand. The fact that the watch list is a tool used by government agencies to vet the American public and what we know when it was leaked in 2019, Care National uh, analyzed the list, the third party, and that third party was able to show that the watch list is comprised of primarily Arab and Muslim names. It is clearly a discriminatory list. Uh, it is a list that uh, targets the American Muslim community and it continues to be used uh, against the Muslim community two decades after 9-11. And this is the issue at hand. And that we continue to see the harm is the problem and we are asking, and this is the ask, I'll wrap up with this, we are asking that the White House take this as an opportunity to once and for all disband the watch list to no longer have government agencies use this discriminatory list in their vetting or in their spying of American citizens. Um, 
I will leave it at that. We have a few speakers that I will invite up. Um, and then, inshallah, we will have questions towards the end. So first, I would like to invite up our attorney at Care New Jersey, Aya Zaki, to offer a few words for comment. Aya is right here. All right, so folks know it's no secret that these watch lists exist, but for some reason, the government um, refuses to acknowledge or confirm their existence. Um, our community knows far too well because of the harassment and the consequences of being on these watch lists um, and the effects that it, it has had on each of us as individuals and our most notable leaders, such as Mayor Khairullah, uh, that these watch lists do in fact exist. And um, the smoking gun does lead back to an existing watch list. Um, the use of these due process free practices like the watch list are not without irreparable consequences that again we know far too well. Um, being placed on a government watch list without knowing why, how, or what got you there in the first place or what to do about it, um, uh, you know, th th this bleeds into uh, th our everyday lives as Muslim American in our, in our communities and it could look as innocuous as being questions for questioned further um, or it could lead to downright harassment or detention um, by authorities or indef an indefinite ban on air travel. Um, it has historically been used as an extrajudicial abuse of power and coercion um, uh, onto the Muslim community and uh, in the United States, and it's now uh, shamefully being wielded against one of our most tenured and respectable leaders, Mayor Khairallah, with absolutely no oversight by any other agency. Um, the government has adamantly refused to disclose what standards they use to place people on this watch list and denies the existence of these watch lists altogether, um, denies watch listed individuals any me meaningful way to correct errors um, or clear their names. And when a person is removed from these watch lists, deprives them of an opportunity, uh, a day in court, or an explanation to why they're on this watch list in the first place. Um, in simple terms, it is punishment without due process, and that goes against the basic tenets of our, um, of our nation. Um, and to be clear, these extrajudicial practices used by law enforcement agencies like the FBI and now like the Secret Service um, has zero oversight and has been ruled unconstitutional by federal courts. It has long been ruled that watch list listing processes um, that are promulgated and executed by law enforcement agencies is illegal, is a violation of the Fifth Amendment, and the reason for its Ill illegality is not entirely related just to the process, um, but evidently because of any lack of um, existing procedures or safeguards to ensure the names on there should be there in the first place. Um, it is vital that if the government blacklists people, um, the standards it uses are approximately narrow um, and they are used I and um, uh, the information it relies on is accurate and credible and the manner in which watch lists are used is consistent with the presumption of innocence until proven guilty and the right to a hearing before a punishment, um, legal principles older than the nation itself, yet the government fails these basic tests of fairness. Um, what happened to Mayor Khairallah, while arbitrary and an absolute abuse of power, is not wholly unexpected. Um, although the government itself denies the existence of a list, data leaks um, have both confirmed its existence and unshockingly confirmed that the overwhelming majority of people on that list are Muslim. And for people who have committed crime, does anyone um, have any doubt that the FBI can properly investigate further and convict that person? There is no evidence that the watch list has in any way prevented terrorism or terrorist attacks from happening. Standard law enforcement agencies use, and now even the Secret Service, um, don't require the government to believe that the person is actually doing something criminal. Uh, this is exactly how we have seen the watch list in practice. Um, it's what we call contagious practice because not only is the person on the watch list suffering the consequences of being on the watch list, but their families and any association with other people um, is also are people who also suffer the consequences. Um, and this unfettered abuse of power needs to stop imminently. This is precisely what Mayor Khairallah is demanding and what we are all determined to achieve. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Aya. Okay, so uh, we also have the mayor, obviously he will be speaking. I just wanted to also note that um, we have a few of our uh, partner organizations who I wanna shout out, um, NJIAJ, Amy is here as well. 
I know Amy will be speaking shortly after the mayor. Um, and then we have Zahra Mayan from the New Jersey Muslim Lawyer Association. Uh, we might have Sheikh Katanari from ICPC uh, and a few others. So they will be speaking shortly after the mayor. Um, and just want to give them a heads up. Uh, so, okay. Uh, now we'll have the mayor come and kind of recount uh, the uh, incident. It's also worth noting that the mayor, uh, it's not the first time he has run into issues like this before. Uh, in 2019, uh, he was working with CARE New York because his cell phone was taken uh, by TSA at JFK from his, uh, upon returning from his travels overseas. Um, so again, it's the watch list strikes again uh, with the Secret Service uh, incident yesterday. So without further ado, I will have the mayor come off the list. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone, and salam alaikum. Um, I want to thank uh, CARE New Jersey and CARE National for uh, responding to my calls uh, quickly uh, when the incident uh, happened. Um, you know, I have no reason to believe that I am an, an, an unsafe person to, to any elected official. I have been around with a lot of elected officials from national level all the way to school board level, uh, and I have supported uh, many of them. Um, so I want to thank CARE, uh, whether the national uh, stage or the New Jersey stage, for responding quickly to what we, what we think now is the utilization of the secret list um, that targets primarily uh, Muslim and Arabs. I'll recount what happened. Um, make other remarks, and then we'll go based on how uh, uh, CARE wants to run the program. But I also want to thank everybody who made it, organizations and uh, officials. So yesterday at 12, 11 p.m., as I was driving into D.C., I was about a few minutes away from the White House. I received a call from a gentleman by the name of Evans from the White House Social Office. Uh, we started by small talk, then he informed me that the Secret Service did not clear me to attend the White House Eid celebration. He went on to state that the Secret Service did not provide a reason, and he pretty much told me that I should turn around and return home uh, in uncertain terms. He informed me that the number uh, he was calling from was his cell phone, and that if I had any further questions, that I could forward them. So I asked him, who do I forward them to? He stated that I can call him, but he doesn't have any further information. Such inconveniences and harassments are not uncommon to me. In 2019, I was held and interrogated at JFK Airport for three hours. I also had my phone taken away and searched through at the time. There was no explanation given at that time. This happened multiple times between 2019 and 2021 when I was returning uh, from Canada by land where I was held up in a glass holding area for my children to watch me and ask, why can't we be with you? A few hours later, I was released and told that they think that they have fixed my problem only to now be faced with the same issue. When I first ran for office in 2001, just one year after I became a naturalized citizen, I was hopeful that I could help implement systematic changes within New Jersey and that would make life better for American Muslims and everyday American. And while I have been able to see this come to fruition for the most part, incidents like this being flagged on a watch list and denied the honor that every leader should be given make me question our progress. The heart of our issue today is not the disinvitation of Mohammed Tahir Kurula, who happens to be me and who is listed on the, selected, on the selectee list with my birth date. Our core issue today is that there is a secret list 
that everyone knows it exists due to the January 26th leak, but our government continues to use it despite it being discriminatory and ruled illegal by a federal judge. I want to thank all those who have contacted me by email or through social media expressing support. I want to thank Governor Murphy. We had a chat last night. Uh, we have here the director of his Intergovernmental Affairs Office, uh, Mr. Rob Field. Uh, we also have uh, senior aide Raj Bath and from the governor's office, my friend Assad Akhtar. I want to thank Senator Booker for also reaching out last night, Congressman Pascrell, the office of Senator Menendez, Mayor Bala from Hoboken, Mayor Vergano from Wayne, and Mayor Saya from Patterson, along with other many elected officials and friends. Last night at 7 p.m., our president tweeted the following. Muslim culture has been woven throughout American culture from the very start. We must always stand against anti-Muslim hate and stand up for the right and dignities of all people. It is essential to who we are, a nation founded on the idea of freedom and justice for all. In my opinion, and regardless of the previous theories, this does not seem to be about my activism in Syria. Last time I was inside Syria was December of 2015. The last time I remember traveling without issues is May of 2019. This has inconvenienced, harassed, and humiliated me and my family ever since, every time we went through an airport. But this, again, is about over 1.5 million people who are on the selectee list who don't have a platform like I do. At this point, our crimes are our names, ethnicities, and religion. And I call on President Biden to correct the injustices of the previous administrations by disbanding this illegal list and correcting ill-advised and racist policies. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor. And there will be opportunity for questions uh, after everyone has got a chance to speak. Um, I think you know, the Mayor uh, drives the, po the point home at the very end. And if it can happen to him, someone who is highly respected uh, and well-known and has held office here in New Jersey for over 20, uh, 17 years, then it can truly happen to anyone. American Muslims, over one million of them, uh, have been enduring uh, the repercussions of being on this list uh, for the past two decades. Uh, and it is time that the current administration bring that harm to an end. So I would like to now bring up Dina Sayed Ahmed, our communications coordinator at CARE New Jersey, to offer a few remarks before we move on to our partner organizations. My name is Dina Sayed Ahmed. That's D-I-N-A-S-A-Y-E-D-A-H-M-E-D. -E -E and I'm the communications manager here at CARE New Jersey, the Council on American Islamic Relations. So as my colleagues have mentioned earlier, in January of this year, uh, a U.S. airline accidentally exposed the no-fly list, which is part of the terrorist screening database. And we learned from that fly list, that no-fly list actually, that there are over 1.5 million names on that list, the majority of whom have Arab-sounding names and Muslim-sounding names. Here at CARE in this office, we've also had cases of people who have had difficulty or who've experienced harassment when traveling. In one such case, it's an elderly business, American Muslim businessman who is a U.S. citizen who frequently is stopped and questioned when entering the U.S. In another case, a student at Al-Azhar University in Egypt is also frequently questioned or stopped when returning to the U.S. To the US. These cases don't even count the number of people who don't report such incidents. We do, we do keep count of the incidents that we receive, but again, these numbers are deflated because the vast majority of American Muslims do not report these sort of issues for fear of repercussions. These two cases that I talked about and Mary Khairala's case are not unique. 
they have far-reaching consequences. But what's even mo more glaring is that in these lists, individuals are not given any due process. There is no way for them to dispute their status. There is no way for them to also remedy any damage that occurs. We see reputational damaging happen. We see harassment happening. We see individuals unable to secure jobs. We see all these cases occurring. And there's no actual meaningful way for them to redress these concerns. A bloated and unfair watch list system does not make us more secure, and the ACLU has long called for the disbanding of this watch list, as we are calling for today, and as, as CARE has long called for. These lists are saturated. If, their lists, if these lists are to exist, the government should have a very specific and very narrow way of putting individuals on these lists, and they should be able to verify that this individual deserves to be on this list in a very direct and concrete way, which we have not seen happening with this list or with other such no-fly lists and watch lists. I continue to echo what my colleagues have called for, which is this banding of this watch list and for a meeting with the White House for Mayor Khairallah to discuss this sort of watch list. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you, Dina. I think it's important to note that, you know, at CARE, obviously, we work to combat Islamophobia. And Islamophobia is a top-down problem in our nation. Uh, and as long as the United States government treats Muslims with suspicion and discrimination, so will our neighbors. So it is important that we take these opportunities to disband policies uh, and practices that our government employs uh, to discriminate against its citizens uh, in order to combat Islamophobia across the board. Now, I, I am very grateful uh, that our uh, partner and our friend at the New Jersey Alliance for Immigrant Justice, Amy Torres, is here. She is executive director of the organization. Uh, and a longtime partner of ours, and I'm happy to have her offer a few remarks. Uh, so thank you, Amy. Good afternoon. My name is Amy Torres with New Jersey Alliance for Immigrant Justice. The Alliance is the state's largest immigration coalition. We bring together over 50 member organizations, many of whom you see here, CARE, Faith in New Jersey, American Friends Services Committee, and together we fight for policies that empower and protect immigrants. Normally, I start by saying what a pleasure it is to stand alongside CARE, a leader and a fierce advocate in the fight for immigrant justice, but today is a very painful occasion for being together. The dichotomy today is a stark one. Just hours ago, the governor acknowledged just how important and valued Muslim Americans are in New Jersey by signing into law a designation that would place the entire month of January as a time to reflect and celebrate the contributions and history of Muslims in our state. At this time, particularly for the Muslim, commu Muslim community, we should be in celebration. Um, but again, our community is marked by painful and traumatic cases of discrimination. Um, as our colleagues at CARE shared, these watch lists are not new. Um, this is just another fresh example of the illegality, the lack of transparency, and the pain that these watch lists cause across our communities. It can ha if it can happen to someone as high profile as a New Jersey mayor, it can happen, and indeed it has happened to any one of us. These secret lists are not new. We must repeat that over and over again. Um, this week also marks the beginning of Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month, and we must remember that government watch lists were also used to target Japanese Americans for internment. Government watch lists were also used to target civil rights leaders and activists under McCarthyism and the Red Scare. The reason we are here today is that secret watch lists have been leaked time and again to advocates, to watchdogs in media, that our communities and Muslim communities are denied justice by the federal government who claims that they do not exist, yet continues to use these very same lists to target, track, and deny the civil liberties of Muslim Americans. It is not a crime to be a Muslim in the United States. It is not a crime to practice our faiths. It is not a crime to proudly preserve or claim our cultures. But it is criminal, it is illegal, and it, it is wrong that 1.5 million Americans are on these watch lists that deny them their rights and due process. We at the Alliance stand in firm solidarity and support of CARE and our leaders in state and local government who are here with us today to call on the Biden administration to do right by these communities. Thank you. Thank you so much.
Thank you very much, Amy, the Alliance. I will now be calling up Zahra Mian, the Me Media and Communications Director of NJMLA, the New Jersey Muslim Lawyer Association. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Zahra Mia, and I'm here on behalf of the New Jersey Muslim Lawyers Association. We understand that Mayor Crayola was prevented from joining the White House Eid event on the basis of a watch list. A watch list maintained by the FBI, known as the Terrorist Screening Database, um, that targets people based on their identity and should never be used. There is no transparency in the process of adding or removing an individual's name from this list. It's apparent that this list does not require any evidence that the person engaged in criminal activity, committed a crime, or will commit a crime in the future. Such lists are not only invasive, but also unconstitutional. Those who are on the watch list do not know that they are on the watch list, they don't know the reason for being on the watch list, and they have no way of having their name cleared from the watch list. This is a violation of this country's due process requirements, particularly where the list is used to prevent civic, civic engagement and travel, such as um, what Mayor Crayola has experienced. Today we see the profiling that Mayor Crayola, a public, public servant who's devo devoted over 17 years of public service to his community, and many other Arab and or Muslim individuals like him face across the country without any concrete basis. We call upon the Biden administration to revoke the use of this watch list. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Zafra. Um, I don't think Sheikh Katanani is here. Okay. Uh, so I will now be calling up uh, Professor Sahar Aziz uh, from Rutgers University, the founding director of the Center for Security and Ra Race and Rights. Professor. My name is Sahar Aziz. I'm a professor of law, Chancellor of Social Justice Scholars at Rutgers University Law School. I am also the executive director of the Center for Security, Race, and Rights, which is the only civil rights center at a U.S. law school that focuses on the civil and human rights of Muslims, Arabs, and South Asians. I am proud to be standing today in solidarity with Mayor Mohammed Khairallah, who has ro been wrongfully excluded from attending the Eid celebration at the White House this weekend. Sadly, such discrimination is what many Muslim Americans have come to expect from a government that has been systematically targeting them in a racialized counterterrorism apparatus, including Kafkaesque watch lists. People are not given any notice as to why they are on the list, much less an opportunity to challenge the basis for which on the, they are on these watch lists. For the past 20 years, the U.S. government has created a behemoth intelligence apparatus that is eviscerating the civil rights and liberties of all Americans. Local and state law enforcement is deputized to serve as the thought police reporting suspicious activity based on hunches and bias, not articulable facts demonstrating criminal wrongdoing. And for decades, lawyers and civil liberties advocates have been calling on the government for systematic reform of the watch lists to no avail. As shown in the groundbreaking report by the Center for Security, Race, and Rights called Shining a Light on New Jersey's Secret Intelligence Apparatus, communities of color are most disproportionately harmed. Whether it is broken windows policing in low-income African-American communities or casting a wide net of suspicion on Muslims, including the esteemed Mayor Muhammad Khairallah, through inaccurate and erroneous watch lists, real people suffer the indignities of second-class citizenship status. Our nation is one of immigrants from all over the world, including Muslim-majority countries in the Middle East, North Africa, and South Asia. Indeed, New Jersey is the home to the largest percentage of Muslims as a percentage of the state population, making them the second largest religious minority faith in the state. So if we want to live up to our ideals of racial equality, religious pluralism, and social justice, then we must demand accountability from our government. An important step toward that end is for the Biden administration to issue an apology to Mayor Muhammad Khairallah and take Islamophobia more seriously through concrete policies, not mere lofty rhetoric. Our nation is stronger when we embrace our diversity and practice inclusion in all aspects of our society. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Professor. Uh, I think it's also, again, worth reiterating that, again, this list, uh, you know, was not born 
uh, during the Biden administration, uh, nor was it just born out of the Trump administration. Uh, in fact, it's a post 9-11 tool that came about in 2003 and has since then continued to grow um, and continues to harm many American Muslims. Uh, and this is an opportunity for the Biden administration to disband it once and for all. So I would like to now bring up Serge Dumathak, the coordinator for End Detention and Deportation Project, American Friends Service Committee uh, in Newark. Um, my name is Serge Dumathak. Um, I'm currently the Black Immigrant Justice Project Coordinator. Oh. So my title has changed. Okay. Right. Um, but uh, it's all for the better. Yeah, okay. Be more targeted there you go. about uh, what our community feels as need. Um, AFPC is a 17-year, it's a 117-year organization. So we've been fighting for peace, been fighting for justice, and any inequalities in the United States and abroad for that long. And uh, uh, we've come across several cases because we represent a lot of immigrant communities in New Jersey. We have about 30 laws on staff, and we've seen time and time again, even in the course of our work, that we come across these issues. Um, if you have an immigration case, and if you happen to appear in any list, you can forget about it. Um, I've come across a document um, about uh, eight years ago where the police of New York and the police of Newark were concurrently targeting and listing all Muslim organizations throughout the New York metropolitan area. Uh, this is well documented. It's not just about uh, maintaining that list from the federal government. It is uh, about our local policing. It's about you know discrimination, targeting people because of who they are, their beliefs, and where they come from. And uh, American Friends stands here to say, we want to be with the mayor, we want to be with CARE, and all our partners here to say no to discrimination, no to injustices, we want a fair treatment of all people in New Jersey and across the world, it's not just America, across the world, because our minority groups are targeted throughout the world. Um, I want to uh, quickly read uh, a prepared statement that uh, we put together, American Friends, with the support of our uh, regional uh, director who wanted me to come here and deliver this speech. Um, so as AFAC and as supporters of immigrant rights, we are deeply concerned about the recent decision to rescind the invitation to the White House aid celebration of Mayor Tyrell of Prospect Park, the great city of Prospect Park. And we know that uh, you've been there for a while. And New Jersey is looking up for you. And like Amy said, if they come against you, it means they can do that to anybody here. Um, you have the support of people elected you in office. There's no doubt about who you are because your life is public knowledge. Your life is public knowledge. And we need to recognize that. That when the people give you the ocean, the power to lead, it means that they trust you. And they've been doing so for more than 17 years. And I think that speaks for itself. We hear about all the leaders calling you. It is proof of your leadership in this great uh, city. So. Uh, this decision is not only unfair, but it also continues to perpetuate a pattern of injustice against the Muslim community that has was exacerbated after 9-11. Because that's when everything started, when the Patriot Act was enacted by this country. If you go back and read the Patriot Act, you will see the seed of injustice through our minority communities. So. Denying him the opportunity to participate in the event is not only discriminatory, but it also sends a message that the contribution of an accomplishment of our Muslim community members are not valued. This decision also sends a dangerous precedent for the treatment of immigrants and religious minority in our country. It reinforces a harmful narrative for the mayor constituents and the community that support his work. And I also want to uh, say to Professor Aziz that uh, your report was uh, well received by the American Friends. We spent a lot of time sharing that report because it is another damning evidence of how current the challenge 
of reforming the justice system and the nagging policing apparatus that destroy our community that we spend our lives time and time again trying to rebuild. So thank you very much and thank you for all to show up. Thank you, sir. Um, okay, we have two more speakers, but before we uh, get to them, I want to share this with everyone. Uh, so you all should have a copy of this. Uh, this is from the Select E watch list, um, and what you see here is a redacted list with the mayor's name being left and his birthday. Uh, it shows that he is on a list with over a million people. I think he's entry number 10 million. Uh, no, no, I'm sorry, not 10, sorry, no, I don't know, I there's a lot of numbers here. <laughs> um, yeah, actually, well, select E watch list, select E watch list, yeah. It does say 10 million, it does say 10 million, yeah, so, yeah, I'm not sure what that refers to, but it's entry number 10. So, uh, we distributed this to everyone uh, to show, again, that he is featured on the list. Uh, Care National has access to the list. As mentioned earlier, uh, they review the list through a third party. Um, as many of us know, they uh, cannot distribute the list, uh, but they are willing to sh uh, screen share. So if you're interested in seeing it for yourself, uh, they can do that. Um, but we've printed it out for everyone's convenience. So um, I want to now bring up another partner, uh, Charlene Walker, Executive Director of Faith in New Jersey. Thank you, Charlene, for joining us. Thank you for having me. Hello everyone. My name is Charlene Walker. I'm the Executive Director of Faith in New Jersey. Faith in New Jersey is a statewide power building organization for faith communities and believers in justice to build a beloved community, one of hope, opportunity, justice, and love. We are also part of the National Faith in Action Network as well as Live Free. I am here to stand in solidarity with CARE New Jersey, which is an amazing organization that really fights for the civil rights of Muslims across New Jersey and beyond. I, as I stand um, in one of the most diverse states in the country, we are 50% global majority, believe it or not. Um, as we stand in solidarity with CARE and the mayor, um, Kairula, and Muslims facing profiling across New Jersey and beyond. See, I believe in a U.S. where this the experiment called democracy actually works. I believe in a U.S. where the government takes seriously its responsibility to actually care for one another and care for those that are in their midst. Even though I am reminded time and time again that this U.S. that we live in values profiling people based off of race, whether you are Arab, Muslim, black, or even a community organizer, you will end up profiled. All while looking the way, looking away when there are white males who decide that they, they don't fit this like suggested profile, which is both racist, xenophobic, and Islamic profiling that espouse hate and a complete disregard for life in our democracy. So much so that they even give tours of our capital um, and later on for them to uh, engage in a coup. All while those targeted by watch lists have their lives thrown in complete and total disarray and are dehumanized by those that enforce it. Clearly profiling that leads to a secretive list is not there to do anything but to harm God's beloved. See, the profiling of God's beloved must end. As people of faith, we stand against all systems grounded in white supremacy. We call for the uprooting of all systems that deny U.S. residents any form of process and relegate them to second-class citizens, because that is exactly what this list does. The government has a responsibility to care for us, but that can't happen while they continue to prop up systems of oppression like this list. So I believe God in this moment is actually calling us forward to build an America that's not, that does not distrust us and lean on oppressive systems like this list, but one that's actually about acceptance and belonging. So I call for the end of this watch list and all systems that dehumanize all of us. Thank, thank you so much, Sharon. Um, I want to really say thank you and extend my gratitude and appreciation to all of our partners. Um, and our advocates and allies across the state of New Jersey. 
uh, for coming out at such short notice uh, to stand with the mayor and our chapter uh, to call an end to the use of the watch list. At this point, it has been made very clear that CARE and the Muslim community has been calling the watch list unconstitutional, and it is time that it is disbanded and not used by any agency um, moving forward. Uh, to wrap us up, I want to invite up to the podium Medina, our communications affairs manager at CARE New Jersey, uh, to offer some final remarks. Good afternoon, Assalamu alaikum everyone. My name is Medina, M-A-D-I-N-A, Rodrago, O-U-E-D-R-A-O-G-O, -E and I am the government affairs manager here at CARE New Jersey. Um, Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh, CARE New Jersey team members, our beloved Mayor of T. Kadala, uh, coalition partners, community members, friends and press. It is with immense sadness that we're here today. As you know, earlier yesterday, CARE New Jersey condemned the United States Secret Service perceived profiling of our longest serving Muslim mayor, Mayor Kadala, of the borough of Prospect Park, and the revocation of his Eid celebration invitation to the White House. It is worth noting that Mayor Kadala was the one who actually helped the New Jersey Democratic Party compile names of the local Muslim leaders to invite and ultimately attend that same celebration in which he was disinvited to. CARE National, along with CARE New Jersey, continues to call on New Jersey Senator Cory Booker, who is a member of the United States Judiciary Committee, to utilize his platform and position to highlight the issues of unconstitutional and discriminatory watch listing evidenced by various incidents, one of which being the recent incidents involving our beloved mayor. CARE New Jersey looks forward to attending the U.S. Council of Muslim Organizations' 8th Annual Muslim Advocacy Day on Capitol Hill, which is taking place on Monday, June 12th to Tuesday, June 13th, in Washington, D.C., where Muslim advocates and activists, as well as representatives for national, state, local, and Muslim organizations and communities will meet with members of Congress and their staff to discuss the most pressing issues impacting American Muslims in today's political climate. Among the issues that CARE New Jersey and the USCMO delegates will be advocating for include watch list reforms. Very ironic, I might say. CARE New Jersey's national forthcoming Civil Rights Department report on the watch list will add much needed insight to the ongoing conversation surrounding these incidents. Enough is enough. Mayor Kadala is a well-respected, well-known, and very beloved elected official within this community. He is also New Jersey's longest serving Muslim mayor who was sworn into his fifth consecutive mayoral term just this January. CARE New Jersey strongly condemns the treatment of Mayor Kadala and stand in support with him in calling for the following from the Biden administration. One, public apology to the mayor and that he be reinvited to the White House. Two, for President Biden to meet with members of the Muslim community to discuss tangible harms that the watch list have caused and continue to cause. And three, to disband these illegal and harmful watch lists. Accountability is the first step in many to rectify this degrading and humiliating experience. Once again, we want to thank our community members, allies, coalition partners, who include the New Jersey Alliance for Immigrant Justice, the New Jersey Muslim Lawyers Association, the Center for Security, Race, and Rights, the American Friends Service Committee, Faith in New Jersey, as well as Justice for All for being here today, being in support, being in solidarity. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you so much.